Hello there! Today I will be comparing the A6500 with kit lens to the RX100 compact camera. In this case, the RX100 Mark IV. But all the latest three generations of RX100 cameras have about the same still picture quality. These are obviously quite different cameras, but it is still interesting to see what will give the best picture quality. The A6500 kit lens is admittedly not uh, known as the greatest lens optically, but it is convenient with a small size and useful zoom range. Taking that one step further, an RX100 has the same zoom range and is quite a bit smaller. The A6500 is Sony's top APS-C camera, and with a sensor more than three times the size of the RX100, one could assume it would create much better pictures particularly in low light and for creating subject isolation with background blur. However, the RX100 has a much brighter lens which goes from f1.8 to 2.8 compared to f3.5 to 5.6 for the kit lens. So if we convert the specs to their full frame equivalents, we see that they are actually very close when we adjust for sensor size. So, let's see how that turns out in pictures. First, I will look at sharpness. Here is a center crop from the wide end of the zoom range with wide open aperture. They are fairly comparable, with maybe a slight edge to the A6500. Stopping the RX100 down to the same f3.5 aperture as the A6500, and it's pretty much equal. While if we stop both down to f5.6, then the A6500 again gains a slight advantage to the RX. But they are both very similar at this point. Wide open in the corner however, and they are both pretty bad, although the RX100 is not quite as bad. If we stop the RX down to the same 3.5 aperture, it does improve quite a bit and stopping down to f5.6, the R RX improves a bit more, while the kit lens remains just as bad as it was. For comparison of what a really good lens gives on the A6500, here is how the Sigma 60mm renders in the corner. Let's look at the mid-range zoom setting of 45mm equivalent. Wide open in the center, the A6500 has a slight edge, but it's close. And if we stop them both down to f5.6, then they both sharpen a little, but the A6500 is still slightly better. In the corner, however, the RX100 is clearly sharper. If we stop them both down to f5.6, then they both get better, but the RX100 still has a clear advantage. And if we compare the A6500 with a good prime lens, the Sigma 30mm, then the A6500 shows its real worth. And then let's check the far end of the zoom range. First wide open in the center. Here the A6500 is better. If we stop the RX down to the same 5.6 aperture, it gets closer, but maybe a slight edge to the kit lens. And last, let's check the corners. Wide open, the RX is clearly better as we've seen throughout the zoom range. But stopping it down to the same 5.6 aperture, the RX actually gets worse than it was wide open, although still better than the kit lens. And just for comparison, here is what it looks like with a good prime lens, in this case the Sony 50mm. I think we can see that the kit lens maybe has a slight sharpness advantage in the center throughout the zoom range, while the RX100 has a clear advantage in the corners. However, if we put a good prime lens on the A6500, it will be much better. Still, the compact RX camera comes out well compared to the kit lens. But how does it do in low light? where larger sensors usually have an advantage. To test that, 
I kept the shutter speed constant as that is often limited by subject or camera movement. And I then set aperture wide open and let the camera choose ISO setting for correct exposure. And for this test I want to test both the A6000 and A6500 as the noise performance usually improves in newer models. So first up the A6000 with kit lens at the wide end versus the RX100. And here we can see that the wider aperture of the RX100 which allows it to shoot at ISO 2000 makes up for the smaller sensor as the kit lens has to shoot at ISO 6400 for the same exposure. If you check the shadows the RX has clearly less noise than A6000. And by the way all these pictures are raw files without any noise removal. So we see the noise that comes straight out of the camera. If we try the kit lens on the newer A6500 then it does do better but it is still worse than the RX100 at the same shutter speed. However if we put a good prime lens on the A6500 like the Sigma 60mm then there is a night and day difference and the compact camera doesn't stand a chance and doing the same test at the long end of the zoom range is pretty much the same result. Next I did a test to see how much bokeh or background blur was possible to get with each option. First at the short end of the zoom range I placed the foreground at the minimum focus distance to create the maximum background blur. And don't worry too much about the foreground sharpness as it might not be completely in focus. Rather what we are looking for here is how much blurred out the background is. And at the short end of the zoom range the RX has an advantage in that it has a much shorter minimum focus distance. This is a cool effect for some semi macro photography but may not be representative for general photography. Testing the long end of the zoom range gives the more general situation. Here the RX doesn't have the minimum focus advantage as these were shot from about the same distance. And we can see that the bokeh is very similar to the kit lens. And this is about as much bokeh as is possible to get with these lenses. For comparison if you put a bright prime lens on the A6500 it has a much stronger effect than either. So can we draw any conclusions from this? I think we have seen today that the RX100 is as good or better than the A6500 with the kit lens in every situation. The only advantage of the kit lens was maybe slight sharper in the center but then it was much worse in the corners. So does that mean that you should rather buy an RX100 than an A6000 series camera? No. But what it does show is that you need to use good lenses with an A6000 series camera. If you only intend to use the kit lens then you are likely to get as good or better results with a good compact camera. So that was it for today. Hope you found this helpful.